All right, rightly said it. We are live and welcome back. This is Why in the Morning and I'm Brian Sankwa. You can find me at Brian Sankwa 101 and that is on our socials and as well. Our socials, mine. <laughs> Ours is at Y254. At Y254 channel underscore on Instagram with the hashtag Y in the morning and then also Thursday vibes. That's where we can actually interact with us, including TikTok. Yes, we are on TikTok at Y254 channel. By the way, everyone will follow. We'll be having amazing TikToks being posted. And speaking of TikTok or TikTok, on that note, we are going to talk about matters software engineering and exactly what happens in the front end at the same time in the back end you know we, we are on social media at least at least half of the mil millennials if not all are on a, at least on our social media a very specific social media and that includes facebook instagram twitter and whatnot but what exactly happened before these apps came into fruition so we're going to actually delve into that and get to understand the science behind all these apps that we love using each and every time and uh, joining us in this interesting conversation is none other than maxwell or cheng who's a software engineer and he has a lot to actually tell us today and i really can't wait first of all good morning and welcome um good morning all right so tell us briefly who you are and what how exactly you got into this space and what exactly happens in there uh good morning to you uh, my name is maxwell Chien. i'm a software engineer and a co-founder of isheria uh basically my journey started after uh joining high school uh when i joined high school Okay. Uh, you know, when you get to join a school, you, you are new to the environment. So yeah. there are a lot uh, different subjects that somebody can take. So uh, when I joined there and uh, you know, my first lesson in computer studies, uh, right. I enjoyed that first lesson. And for me, that was, you know, like uh, the, uh, the goal for me. So I started, you know, get, uh, getting interested to know about what happens in the software industry. I started reading more. I could even read books beyond my class, you know, getting to know what happens uh, like uh, in the future. So I will interact with you. Yeah, <laughs> I interact with Form 4 books. So basically the interest kept growing and I, I went on to, you know, do it to the Form 4 level. And after Form 4, the, the path was clear to me. Software engineering was the goal. Either I was going to do computer science or software engineering. So, right. and that's how I found myself in the field. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, that's really uh, an interesting story because, you know, most of us have been always been pushed to do courses that should please <laughs> our guardians. But I'm glad you followed your passion and you actually knew yourself like you had some sort of identity yeah. before you chose this, which I feel like is going to go on well and end up well for you. So uh, I'd really like to know, like, what is the difference between an IT expert and a software engineer? Uh, a lot of people say, ah, we don't say I'm a IT, I'm only software engineer. And it's really confusing for somebody who has a very shallow uh, knowledge of, yeah. of this profession. Like, if you could exactly paint for us a picture, if at all, there's there are different two things, or is the same same thing? Yeah, basically, it's uh, they're close. So I'll say, like, you know, with software engineering, is uh, somebody who has undertaken, uh, you know, you've learned the principles, you've learned uh, the procedures of on how to, you know, to create an application or a product that will shape the future or you know help uh the back-end users on how to you know make their life uh simple again when you look at it personnel uh, it, uh the difference is you you, you I, I can't be an it personnel but yeah. it depends am i good with uh, you know creating software am i good with coding so it personnel mostly it's used to refer to people you know who can ensure uh technological operations uh, in an organization are running fluently without touching a code or involving the, uh, themselves in, uh, you know, creating something or like a software. Right. So you're just there in organization to make sure that their technological operations are running fluently. All right. Uh, in your description, you say you're passionate about uh, developing with a strong focus on backend engineering. Yeah. Uh, if you could explain to that to our viewer what exactly that means, uh, we're really interested to know uh, what exactly is that. Yeah, so backend engineering is uh, basically, you know, uh, creating APIs that are... APIs, meaning... Yeah. 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 APIs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please, when you mention any abbreviation, oh, say yeah. it in full. Because okay. <laughs> here we are in a class. <laughs> <laughs> so API is application programming interfaces. Mm -hmm. um, so when I say backend, it's like this newsroom. Right. We are here, we are on the front end. Okay. But there are some guys who are making sure we are live. Yeah, And exactly. people can at see the us back end. Yeah, at the back end. So now in a software engineering... 
So in a software engineering world, yep. it means um, uh, w when you log into a website, how you log in uh, when you're being told like your password is wrong, it means somebody worked on the back end to ensure that you have to provide the uh, right credentials to do that. So yeah. you know you focus on uh, creating web servers and uh, integrating databases on these web servers to make sure that application is running smoothly and right. yeah the application is secure. So that is what you call uh, that is basically what is back end engineering is. Nice. Yeah. Interesting because it has given me an, it has given me uh, actually a vision on how to how we use social media each and all the time. Yeah. And and, and I'd, I'd really like to come to that example that I had mentioned of TikTok be banned in Britain and USA, but you'll tell us before we go there. Yeah. Tell us what are some of the examples of that software engineering, some of the examples that uh, are in that area. Before we get into using social media, data privacy and whatnot, some of the examples of software engineering. Uh, maybe you could expand more. Uh, like what? What? Let's let me just say like now. What? What? What is the fruit of software engineering? Yeah. Oh yeah. So again, software engineering is you know uh, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, activity uh, of software engineers to try and uh, create uh, more applications on or solutions that can make human life easier. You know. Right. There are repetitive tasks that uh, used to be done manually by human being, or some things used to involve human intervention. So when software engineering comes in, it tries to leverage, you know, to try to create applications that can automate these repetitive tasks to avoid human intervention. So instead of you focusing on doing this, maybe you can move you to another department because now this one is being done by a software. So you know, you find collaboration productivity is very high in such places where they use softwares to you know to do their daily operations especially in our organization all right good yeah. now uh like i mentioned before everybody's on tick not everybody though yeah please not everyone <laughs> <laughs> not everyone yeah. but everybody's a, a millennials at least there's half of our millennials who are uh i believe you're also a millennial we are on social media <laughs> yeah. and we are using apps that have been developed which i feel like uh you are among the people that can develop an app. Yeah. So what exactly happens for an app before it comes to fruition? And then now it has people, over 10 billion people using the app yeah. all over the world. Uh, if you can paint for us a picture using maybe TikTok as an example or any other that will pop up in your explanation. Yeah. So uh, the process of creating an application, you know, it's, it, it has to start from an idea, you know. Uh, like you see TikTok or maybe let's start from... Uh, Okay, let me use TikTok. So TikTok was somebody's idea. You know, somebody sat down and thought of, why can't I come up with a social media where, you know, uh, people can showcase what they do, what they like. So that was an idea. So he shared it with, you know, a group, uh, and this is where now it, it involves information gathering. So after ideation, you have to gather the information. So that is the second step. After you gather the information, you know, when you're gathering information, you're getting the feedback from, right. you know, uh, from real users. Okay, we like it. Many people will have, you know, opinions on it. So after you do that, again, you, now you plan on how you want to, to do it. And right. then you design. Now you design the platform. Now that's where uh, you find interfaces. So somebody saying, I think we should have these buttons on the lower side. I think we should only have home button, you know, yeah. user button. So after design is now where you construct or you code. Now yeah. you create the application. It's yeah. after creation is where it goes to test and maintenance. Once it has passed the tests and you know the creating team or uh, the software engineering team feels like this is ready and this is good, and then they release it on the market. And yeah. that's where now maintenance starts. So you know when you release the software into the market, you get feedback from the users. So it's this feedback that the organization that came up with the application, now they have to be very responsive on this feedback to help the application to remain, uh, to be adaptive to the technological change and user needs change. So uh, yeah, that's basically Interesting, it. interesting, interesting. I'm trying to, to rethink, I was reading somewhere, uh, you know, the idea has escaped. What they were saying, Instagram is gallery, like mainly for photos and videos. It's yeah. a gallery platform and then Twitter is text, but it's like both text and gallery because you have to use infographics and let's say still photos, even videos as well. So at what point do you, uh, do you say that this is an app that's suitable for like official users only? And this one is, a, is like for everyone, anyone who can do anything, 
can't even including adults. And I'm also interested to know how uh, like uh, apps like OnlyFans, where now people are there to just showcase crazy things, but yeah. crazy in a good way, because crazy to someone could be good and crazy to another person could mean amazing. So uh, how do you draw the line between these apps and say, this one is for disabled people, this one is for everyone, and this one is for people who can't do this and that. I believe that is interface friendly, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, again, as I said earlier, uh, when you're creating a software, is it has to start from the ideation point. So what's your idea? At the, at the point of you know uh, thinking uh, like, I want to venture into software engineering market or you know product market. Uh, creating solutions that can help people to, uh, you know, for entertainment, to uh, automate their work, to help them grow in organization. So at that first point is when uh, so you have to decide that this application, I think it's for children. This application, I think, who are the target audience? Yeah. That's where it comes in. Your target audience, yeah. uh, when you release your application, automatically when you start marketing it, it will be suitable for, you know, I'll say that this application is suitable for children. So it begins at the first point. So it's not something that the market will decide later. It's you who is like coming. Like the, the original idea, like I'm creating this app for disabled yeah, people. Exactly. And, 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 and now when it comes to even using the platforms, how user, how user safe are the apps in terms of data management, which I believe is a very big issue worldwide when yeah. it comes to digital space, including us Africans. Uh, we are being told, we've seen videos of us Kenyans being sold to China. So you, uh, people are speaking in a certain language that are interpreted to be saying different things. How safe is it and what are some of the laws that you know, are there to regulate that, which I feel like it, it, it needs an international focusing, like we need to understand privacy of our data. And then you'll talk about the legal implications as well, because I understand you have something amazing that you developed as well in that line, so yeah. you'll tell us. So basically, uh, again, uh, data protection is a very big issue. It's a very major issue when it comes to creating cloud applications or you know, so any software. So you as a company, uh, now again, this is a groundwork. This is a groundwork that you have to do as a company. You, know, you have to lay your uh, security protocols uh, before creating such an application because you know, once you put this application on the, on the internet, and with the evolving technology, you know, you have to be very, because every day hackers keep getting smart. So right. if you don't lay your security protocols at the beginning or when you're creating the application, then generally uh, in, the, in the future you might be hacked. And you see, yeah. the repercussions are very severe and mm -hmm. there's no going, once you get attacked uh, mm -hmm. online, you know, you've ruined your customer, uh, relations with the organization so again it's something that has to be looked before e even uh, releasing the software how is our security measures what should we do to protect uh, somebody online or somebody from getting out when using our application online yeah right. i remember those was it cnn's website or it should have been a talk show's website that was hacked yeah and then people said very uh, uh, not so good uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what do we call that? Like when a, soft, when a website is hacked and then the, later on it's found out that somebody from another country tried to invade it and attacked it. Uh, yeah. You know, we call it an attack now. <laughs> attacked the website. <laughs> and then Kidoko Kidoko was scared. Leo, uh, website is down to to BSG. What usually happens? Yeah, that, that is what we call a DDoS attack, a denial of uh, you know, service attack. So your website is online and then somebody with malicious intention, just uh, text it down. So for you, when, when your customers are trying to log in, they're being told like the website is down, but in real sense- Or unavailable. Yeah, or unavailable. So, but yeah. in real sense, it's not your, you know, maybe you are not, it's not your software engineering team that is making uh, any updates or any changes. Right. It's somebody who attacked you. So yeah, that's what it's called. It's like an inverter or yeah. a bug, anyway, because we share this case story in a virus, so kuna virus. Yeah. But then please explain, explain on that one before we move to the next point. What exactly is a virus? I was getting flash on me, you a virus, so I link this new cable because I'm young, so this is young, you a virus, so it's junior and then you flash. What exactly is that for somebody who doesn't understand the technicalities of the back end? Uh, so, virus is, uh, it's like. It's, it's like, a malware. Yeah, anyways. it's a malware. It's like a, right. it's like a worm. 
that yeah. attaches itself on your on your data. So you know, uh, your flash drive was clean, and then uh, maybe my computer is having some uh, worms or malwares. Once you inject it, you know, this thing it's it's created by someone. So and somebody who created it, it means uh, he coded it very well in a way that if it sees and if it sees any you know external drive injected in it can just attach itself on the file without knowing so when you copy files from my computer and they are you know affected by this malware already right. so you carry it with your flash drive and right. that's how you know this flash drive you go and insert it in another computer yeah. and slowly by slowly you are gets infected yeah by virus yeah and looks like so body to body or human to human. And on that note, let's switch gears, Kidogo. What are some of the regulations when it comes to data privacy management? Are there any principles, maybe? And if at all, are there possible solutions? And you, as a software engineer, have you tried to uh, maybe look for a specific market? And what are some of the, let's say, some of the things you've created to actually fill that gap in terms of legal, the legal aspect and uh, what happens in that area, especially when it comes to using also social media? Yeah. Again, with social media, uh, when you're creating such a platform where it needs or requires user information that is going extra, uh, so you, you know, with applications that needs to uh, require or have access to your phone book, have access to your messaging, you know, it's weird why an application would have access to your message. So, oh, yeah. you know, I, I think. Uh, they are, uh, the, the organization, you know, they have to be in conjunction with the, with the legal uh, or with the judicial system or maybe the Data Protection uh, Act. Yeah, Act. our constitution. Yeah, to ensure that mm -hmm. this user data that you are about to, you know, to get, how are you protecting it? Like, uh, how is this person safe online? How is this right. uh, person's data safe with your application? Right. What are the measures that your organization is taking to ensure that you know, we cannot have a breach of data where somebody's sensitive information was posted online. It's because mm -hmm. our organization was breached. What are the measures you take when you, you, you are... When the legal. You are, yeah. That's the legal. Yeah, the legal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When you take, when your uh, organization is breached, when there's a data breach. So, right. yeah. And, and on that note, I had asked, uh, you're forgetting, oh, what have you created yourself to fill in that gap to solve that problem? Uh, right now, we've not uh, ventured into any data protection uh, software, really. Right. You had mentioned Isharia. <laughs> yeah, so Isharia is basically, uh, as I said earlier, Isharia is a, is a legal software. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's an easy to use uh, law firm management software. So okay. basically, what we are doing is we are providing a software to law firms to help them manage their daily to day, uh, their daily to day. Uh, operations in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a firm. Right. So, you know, instead of law firms focusing on how they can, you know, handle their clients' data, how they can store these files that they receive. Instead of like pleadings. doing paperwork. Yeah, Let's instead of do doing paperwork, yeah. we migrate them to, you know, uh, digitally. Uh, right. you know, so, we only want you to focus on client. Yeah, it's f oh, for you client, to, you know, yeah. deliver mm -hmm. better services and to the clients instead of focusing on how am I going to protect this data. So Isheria is a cloud application software. Right. So it can be downloaded or somewhere. Uh, at the moment, is it existing as an app or as a website? Uh, it's a website. So okay. it exists online. It's a web application. Uh, it's a software as a service, which means we can work with many law firms uh, just using one application uh, interface. So maybe you can check it, but. Yeah, where can people access it? Ah. Uh, so when you go to our uh, landing page, uh, isheria.co.ke, okay. uh, you'll get us there. You'll right. see the services we offer. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, before we, 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 we move away from that, I'm also interested to know, like, uh, why exactly did you choose that? The, 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 the law firms, so why did you target law firms? Maybe was there a need or a gap that you saw, I'm a problem that you saw, if I create this then I'm solving this menace and have you, was it from a personal experience or from a professional experience? Did you see it happening everywhere in Kenya? So you, you said, now I'm gonna create something that will solve this issue. Yeah, so basically back in uh, 2020, I think that's when uh, the corona pandemic struck us. So, 
you know, uh, there have been uh, changes in the legal, uh, you, you've seen, you know, the legal system of Kenya. Uh, there have been these uh, reforms that uh, they've been doing uh, over the past, you know, two years. So there's this new uh, change that uh, they recently did. It's a technological, uh, technological change. They're trying to modernize law courts uh, where they've introduced e-filing, where clients or, you know, uh, advocates can file a case and, you know, access court uh, documents online. And we felt like, you know, this was done to help law courts, but you see, the law firms were left out and yet they're in the uh, legal space again. Yeah. So we thought of a way, how can we, you know, help law firms to move from manual paperwork to, you know, going digital. digital yeah. yeah. So that's where, uh, so Sharia is basically, we, uh, we, have, we have four of us. Okay. So one of our friends actually did law and you know, when it, come, when it came to creating the software, yeah. he was our major lead because uh, yeah. he would guide us. Yeah, combine the brains. Yeah, combine the brains. Software and tech, uh, I mean tech and law. And law. So uh, we saw the gap and we thought of, I think we can do a great thing in the uh, legal tech space. Uh, we right. can create a software that can help even law firms to go digital. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you can be able to answer this. What are some of the digital laws that are there from your experience that you'd say if somebody, also especially regarding to data privacy, yeah. uh, like you say, if somebody, like for us at Y, we, are, we want to defend ourselves against somebody who has just attacked us and they're trying to use something from our socials to, you know, take us to court. Uh, what is that one line we can use and to not be gave, <laughs> to not be gave, stop but to not be according to the constitution? <laughs> Chapter blah, 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 blah. The digital act says da 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 and then one on your mother. Yeah, so basically, again, uh, you know, this is a legal matter and uh, from my expertise, I'm more of a software guy, so, but I'll, I'll try to put it this way. Any organization that is dealing with a software that you know has to acquire user data and you are, as an organization you are dealing with very uh, sensitive and in, uh, uh, private uh, information of your users right. again I think you are required to have like uh, let me say a law firm you know not a law firm but a lawsuit is it lawsuit or yeah lawsuit yeah sure. exactly yeah. people who are there to ready to defend you and such matters uh, arise so right. yeah that's the first measure you can take Right. Making sure that you're being protected by one of the uh, your law firms in your country, yeah, yeah, which which is good to always have a lawyer, yeah, you know, even if it's a lawyer friend, yeah. yeah. Uh, that there's there's something called commercial law and even entertainment law. Like it's everything. It even applies to adult content. I saw it, and it's something that a lot of people are not aware. Even how to be safe in the digital space. Yes. And I think you'll answer that at some point. But let's switch gears to matters AI, which is an interesting topic. And uh, I had mentioned uh, apps like uh, Chat GPT, which are now trending, and a lot of people are trying to understand hey he chat gpt in a mini by the way i don't know if you have a digital uh, smartphone uh, digital really if you have a smartphone in short a bonda to angalate chat gpt in a mansion in unaza country naza kwa inacho meka na ujui bro so a bit tell us what, uh, how ai has evolved to a place now we can easily do things without even having to use human force or human labor to just like we have things happening magically and i love the fact that this chat gpt gives you things in less than uh, two three seconds yeah. as well uh, before that uh, talk about coding we'll come to that don't worry talk about coding is it a must for you to be a coder to be in this space and what exactly is coding yeah so coding is like like i've said before like after you design, you know, design is like uh, this room, right. this room. Somebody can tell me to create a website how this room look, looks like. So when you design, you just draw it something like you're drawing on paper. So right. now when these structures are standing here, now this is what we call the aftermath of coding. For the so design. Yeah, right. yeah, for the design. Mm -hmm. So coding is basically, you know, constructing that software to make it Use, usable by somebody, you know, somebody can interact with the application and actually yeah. do one or two on it. So, yeah, that's right. what coding do. So you create the software uh -huh. after the design. Okay. So to be in tech space, do you need to be a coder? No, you don't need yeah. to be a coder. You, there are a lot of things that you can venture in. You can decide to be a tech. For me, I want to be a technical writer. Yeah, right. you know, uh -huh. yeah. I just want to, 
you can also you can still be in the tech space by just you know interviewing um what do you call them uh tech startup founders or any uh, mm -hmm. f uh startup founders yeah there's so many ways to be in tech so right. you don't need uh to be specifically to be you know a dev or a coder yeah right which is interesting because i have a very close friend who is very deep into coding and uh, I, we interact sometimes and the things he tells me, so the, uh, he mentions Laravel, so the, you had mentioned of JavaScript and I go and r I read about them and I'm like, bro, I'm not ready for this kind of lingo. It's like law, you know, yeah. the, the jargon is too heavy. Like you must be very, you know, <laughs> mentally a bit. Now I'll talk about AI that I had mentioned before, uh, including chat GPT. What, is, what exactly is it? Yeah, chat, so chat GPT is a, uh, you know, it's a very smart, intelligent bot. So ChatGPT stands for Chat Generative Pre-trained uh, Performance. Okay. So it's a chatbot that human can inter. It, it's it's an interactive chatbot. So okay. you post your chat question. Bot. Yeah. B O T. Yeah. Please explain bot because <laughs> in terms of forex, <laughs> peer kuna konga na bots. Bots. Na zina backfire sana. Yeah. So bot is basically you know something that can interact with a human or you know, you can give it instructions and it performs the action. Right. So... Is it like a command? A computer command? Yeah, but for chat GPT now, it's like you, you're giving it the human language. So... Right. Yeah, so a bot is... you're giving it what you're thinking. Yeah. I want Brian Sarko's CV. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Kila kitu na penyashai kwa apo instantly. Yeah. Yeah. What is the difference between that and Google now? <laughs> <laughs> so Google is a search engine. Uh, basically, it's... It's the same thing. You, w when you look at ChatGPT, when you look at Google, these are be, uh, these are chat uh, the search engines. But you know, ChatGPT is more, let me say, sophisticated and very smart because it's using AI models. You know, a model is something that is trained to understand the natural human language and give back information uh, from the information that have in, uh, that have keyed as an uh, as an input. Right. So, you know, tech is evolving and uh, ChatGPT is kind of, you know, disrupting uh, the, the workspace. Yeah. yeah. And people are feeling more threatened than before. People right. are they're thinking like that they're on the verge of losing their jobs. Uh, you know, there's uh, issues about school homeworks. You know, teachers yeah. are fearing this thing is yeah. going to replace them. But again, uh, my tech is very simple on this matter of AI revolution. Right. So it reminds me of Samantha. Kulukona time, Luana scare our son. And don't know to Samantha, come over with a physical baby girl. And don't know Samantha. And people actually did not know that that was introduction of AI. AI. Yeah. Right? So I'm relating. You can see. Yeah. yeah. So my tech, like, uh, uh, you know, many people have, have been into many spaces. And the first thing somebody, you know, when the speaker is done and somebody, do you have a question? The first question is always software engineers, uh, software engineers especially, they are so worried. The first question somebody raises his hand and says, "Hi, uh, my name is Dash Dash. Will AI take my job as a software engineer?" You see, right. yeah, yeah, people are so threatened. And, but my tech is very simple. This right. matter is this is something that you cannot control. You know, okay. technology will keep evolving. So you, as a person, what you need to do is level up. You know, right. yeah, do. When you knew one, two, three, that now AI can solve, the only opportunity you have to remain very relevant in the, in the tech space is to keep evolving. You know, learn to adapt, learn the new things. If AI now can create uh, or give you a, a code snip of a certain function, why don't you, as a software engineer, you know, focus on maybe, uh, you know, software uh, architecture, focus on software design, yeah, yeah. you see? You, when you keep leveling up, then you don't need to worry about these things because these things are there and they'll continue coming. So, right. again, in the school in the, uh, in the school industry, again, teachers are threatened. You know, students are not now doing their homework, and even some schools, especially boarding schools, where they are using internet, they're banning Chat GPT from access on that right. uh, internet. So, for me, I yeah. see this thing as you know, it, it's it's a blessing because. Uh, is it a blessing and a curse at the same time? <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time because now it needs you as a human to level up at a level yeah. where you thought that you'll never reach because you have to level unless uh, unless you'll get you want to get uh, retrenched, right? But you need to level up. So again, in school, I see this tool as a, 
are helping aid to a teacher. So for me, I think it's a good thing that teachers and can embrace. Instead of banning it, they, yeah. instead they can, you know, show the students how to use it use to it. be yeah. informative, you know, with the yeah. current uh, technology or the current trends in the world. So yeah. Yeah, that's my take. Interesting. But at the same time, my dilemma is yeah. this same, same AI softwares, apps, and everything from that space yeah. how, is human generated. Yeah. So I'm really wondering how what a human being has created is at the same time threatening his or her opportunities. That is my dilemma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you see, uh, w when, you, when you're doing an innovation, you are not doing innovation to, you know, to disrupt the normal human being, uh, you know, way of living or trying to take his job away. What you are trying to do is to um, help him uh, to, or help them to, you know, to do their job effi uh, job uh, efficiently and effectively. So AI is just there to help us and move away from the repetitive tasks that we used to do manually, so right. they get automated. So, yeah, that's basically my feeling. I don't think we are being threatened by the same human being who created the AI. Right. Yeah, they're just trying to help. All right. Well, which is interesting at the same time because when you look at uh, the world we're living in, especially when it comes to education, the point you mentioned about education, yeah. I'm trying to, uh, I, I feel like it's going to make work easy. Because right now, for example, you're still in campus and you want to, I don't know if you believe in uh, using exact information from the internet, but at some point for me, I've used it uh, in my academia at some point at school. They're like, hey, I'm going to make an ini to make an essay about, you know, how to create sulfur dioxide. You go chop, you want to put the exact components and, you know, so it's really interesting. So we are due for a break. All right, so uh, you can interact with us on our social media at uh, Y254 channel, but before we go, I'd just like you to give your final word and uh, what we should expect from you because I'm told our time is up and where can people access you? For example, if a person needs your services in software developing because you deal with the front end and back end, where can they access you? That's your camera. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can access me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is mochieng uh, underscore. Uh, you can send us an email, especially if you are a law firm and you're looking forward to take your law firm online. Uh, we can provide uh, the best services for your law firm. Uh, send us an email to support at isharia.co.ke. Thank you. Number? You don't want to give out your number? <laughs> you're good? You're comfortable? I'm not forcing you, please. Uh, okay, sure. I'm comfortable. So, so you can reach me on 704 239 Zero seven zero four four zero seven two three nine. Thank you. All right. We have been speaking to Maxwell Ocheng, who is a software engineer. And definitely, if you are clueless about what happens in that world, yeah, I'm sure you've learned a lot. Personally, for me, like this is another chapter I'm already opening. I don't know, but I don't know about you. But tell us on that hashtag why in the morning as well as Thursday Vibes at Y254 channel underscore on Instagram. Mine is at Brian Sakuano. One, we take a break. We come back with much more. Stick around. <laughs>